Tsunami was conceived when Mike Lazo, who runs Adult Swim, uh, took over programming for Cartoon Network and he came to Sean Aikens and asked him to create a block of action cartoons to replace whatever was on at the time and Sean uh, was hired away from TNT to work for Cartoon Network and uh, along with myself and then a guy named Michael Cahill and then Gil he came up with the idea for an action block of cartoons um, that was more reflective of the things he liked, the music he listened to that we listened to, rap music and electronic music, uh, skating, comic books, sort of more youth culture. And it was Sh Sean's idea to have it be a robot host. Um, after we experimented with the idea of a live action host that talked to an AI, which thankfully died on the table. And when Sean was looking into who would host it, we tried a bunch of different things and it was Lazo that came up with the idea of, well, you should have one of our characters we own host it so we don't have to pay for it. So Multar was the decision well, yeah. because he didn't have a mouth so you could do easy animation. And that's how Toonami came to be. What he said. Hey, my name is Dana Swanson. I uh, portray Sarah on Toonami. I'm her voice. Um, being asked to play Sarah was uh, like a huge honor. I, I honestly didn't know that I was being asked to play Sarah when it came about. I thought I was just doing what's called scratch voiceover, where it's something I do a lot here. Like someone has a promo and they need a female voice and I'll come into the sound booth and just kind of put my voice in. And every once in a while, I'm lucky enough for that to be the final recording. So I thought that this was just a scratch. They needed to just put it in. And um, I think it was, I was on vacation, got back in town. Uh, Gil kept e emailing me to record this thing. I was like, gosh, why is he like being so high stress about this, about this like scratch vocal, like, or scratch VO. And, and uh, I came in and then recorded it with Brent. And then he kept emailing me back like, no, can you try it like this? Or can we do it like this? And I was like, okay, sure. And um, yeah, and then I found out shortly later that they're like, okay, great, you're gonna be airing on Saturday. And I was like, but you're gonna be Sarah. And <laughs> Sarah, how you been? Hello, Tom, it's good to see you again. No doubt, been too long. It was a huge, huge deal and, and huge honor. And I just had, um, like, I just, I try never to get my hopes up with any of that. And so it was, it was like, I was over the moon. I thought it was so cool <laughs> to be asked. <laughs> The first time that it ever seemed more than just the five people that were in the room, and I mean, even people at Cartoon Network were just like, what is it that you work on again? I was wearing a Toonami shirt in a random gas station in like Mississippi, and the guy working there was like, how did you get that shirt? I need to have, like, and was a big fan, and I was just like, wow, people actually watch, like, that's bananas. When Toonami started, it was, it was pretty exciting. Um, I didn't have, I, I guess a huge connection with it until the early 2000s. Like it was just a big thing in the dorms. Like it was, it was on, and people were constantly watching Dragon Ball and really excited about about that and like reenacting battles. Like it was, it was pretty cool. It was around the Dragon Ball era, you know, when we started having reporters come to us and ask us, like, you know, what, how, how are you guys doing so well? Like basically, it was more. I knew that when people who had nothing to do with giving a crap about cartoons or anime were coming to us asking why we were doing so well, that we had penetrated popular consciousness in a bigger way. Because if you work for the Wall Street Journal and you suddenly have to pretend to care about anime, you're doing it because 
there's enough people out there talking about it that you feel like you have to be a part of the conversations. So. Hi, my name is Sarah Hardy and I, sorry, let me start over. <laughs> I'm Sarah Hardy and I'm a senior editor at Toonami um, and I've been here for about 14 years. I joined up with Toonami, um, I started working with them informally around 2001, I was at a, a job where they used to come and do all their audio mixes because at the time we didn't have an in-house audio guy. And so I kind of built a relationship with Jason um, and Sean over the years, and they would give me small projects. I would come in at night and do some packaging. And then um, Johnny Ray, he went on to do some other things. And I started January 1st of 2002 and have stayed on ever since. I'm really methodical in the way I begin a project. I'm about to begin a promo right now, and so you, you gotta watch a bunch of episodes of a show. And then I just make notes and I catalog and I label things different colors to try to get an idea. And as I'm watching it, I'm trying to kind of come up with my own idea of stuff. The first, those first, that first day or so is a little ugly because I'm just trying things, which sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, and then I kind of go and looking for some, go and look for some music that follows the the, the storyline I'm trying to go with. Then it's it's just a, a couple days of. I'd like to say there was real art to it. A lot of it's hacking and trying and failing, and um, and then eventually it you know, all starts to come together. And so yeah, I just it's all about just trying things, and I'd like to think that it looks professional. <laughs> Is Toonami a failed experiment destined for destruction? When Sean was in meetings de developing Toonami, he had many arguments on a weekly basis in the first six months. With the, current, with the head of the network at that time. Once it started doing well, and Lazo sort of stepped more forward, they left it alone. And then again, it was really in the early 2000s more when Lazo stepped back to work on Adult Swim. The people that came in, Toonami at that point had been established, and, they, and the network itself was figuring out, as it had growing pains, what its identity was and how Toonami fit into that. So then we had, a lot of different people's opinions about where it should go and what it should be, which is understandable in a company this size that they would try to do that. It always seemed like it was two weeks away from getting canceled. Um, and that's where the Manipulate the Manual spot came from of like, before there was social media and people could express their desire, it was just sort of like, I don't know, is this working? Do people like it? And that was the call for people to write in and talk about it. But it always seemed like, we're not gonna get canceled this week, but it feels like next week is probably gonna be the last week that we'll be around. We started to get more, I feel personally, no offense to the people that were programming at the time, but I feel like we somewhat lost our way and started just taking deals with people uh, for shows that didn't necessarily feel right or that were sort of uh, paid for shows that we didn't, we were just told you're going to show this because someone gave us as a network some money. Well, they are kind of cute. I mean, from an executive standpoint, there wasn't a vested interest necessarily in keeping it going. And there was always the question of how does this fit into the larger network? And I think when it, you're not the one who has a stake in that, that it's a lot easier to say, Shouldn't we just divert these resources to something else or figure out another way to go? Uh, for Toonami, I manage the overall budget uh, for the for the year and um, and then help with scheduling and planning of if we have an upcoming lineup change, we have a stunt we want to do like we did Intruder 2 last year, putting that together if we're going to do a marathon um, for a holiday weekend, that sort of thing. So it's it's planning ahead to what's coming up, what we need to do. Um, if there's, I, to give Intruder 2 as an example of that, it was, okay, we're gonna have a seven week campaign. We have seven episodes we're producing in 3D graphics. We need to do all new packaging, which are the bumps um, that Tom and Sarah are in. We have to produce new packaging for every week. We have to do a whole brand new look after it. And so my job is to go, okay, this is everything we need to do and then how much time is it gonna to take to make all of that? How much money is it gonna cost? Who are we gonna hire? And so then I kind of look at, okay, we're gonna do it in November, and then I go back in July and I start planning to how, make, how to make that happen by November. And that's just Intruder, and then, which is a big, giant, ridiculous campaign that we put together um, over the holidays, so it was kind of crazy, but um, 
can give you kind of a scope of like the big stuff we work on within Toonami and then just the day to day, you know, when it's just a regular block, it's just essentially just keeping the train on the tracks. Well, this is the end, beautiful friends. We had that, the goodbye piece. After more than 11 I guess when we really knew it was ending is when we had it written and squared away and we gave it to the 3D team and they were like, wait, what? And we had sort of made our peace with it and knew that this was coming. It was just sort of the CNN funeral video that you just keep on file for whenever the time comes. I was on Twitter when Toonami was canceled, actually. That, that was when I just started using Twitter, so I like live tweeted it. They didn't want to tell anyone it was canceled, they just wanted it to end. And so we decided, well, hell, the hell with that. We're gonna make a little thing. We didn't tell them, we didn't tell anybody, we just programmed it and put it on the air. And we also had the Samurai Jack, which is the last show. We had those bumps silent. Like, we just did a little something so it wasn't totally just like, it's gone, the next week you go. Stay gold. Bang. Oh, hi, Adult Swim. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have April Fools. Every year Adult Swim does an April Fool's prank and Mike Lazo was brainstorming with Kim Manning who is the head of programming for Adult Swim about what they might do and I think Kim brought up hey wouldn't it be cool if we just ran a bunch of old Toonami packaging and it was just Toonami for a night and Lazo said I think that's a great idea so then they told Gil and I and we said yeah that is a great idea and we saw the glimmer of a chance to do something cool so we said can we make can we sort of pull together stuff and, and make sure that the night works and not just show random olds because they wanted to just sort of throw all kinds of Toonami packaging on the air and we wanted it to feel like a broadcast of Toonami. Personally I didn't think it was gonna have nearly the reaction that it did. No yeah I thought it would be a cool thing but I didn't know that people would react the way they did. I didn't know that we would like ride that nostalgia wave <laughs> the way that you know I wasn't prepared for that neither none of us were I mean we were all up the whole night Steve Bloom was we were uh, all the Toonami people who work all the people who work on Toonami Lazo was all of us stayed up almost that whole night because we were so excited seeing everybody's reactions we were texting each other and emailing each other like holy crap you see this it was fascinating to be part of something and then to see it just completely blow up and you know the bring back tsunami and all of that started um, and then it was okay now we have a month to bring back an entire block which was a little overwhelming of how do we do that welcome to the televised revolution as we drift through outer space aboard the absolution with time back in active duty is captain in charge of bringing superior anime action yeah tsunami's back bitches to celebrate time's return to television i think that we're having success now and we hope that that doesn't change but i mean you never really know what the future will hold, but I, we have the support of a network. We have a lot of fan support. Um, we're still excited to be working on it. So hopefully the future remains bright, I would say. I think so. Jason yeah, shrugs. <laughs> it amazes me how much Toonami has just exploded since, since we came back. I mean, we just kind of hoped it would be, you know, people, fans would still be there and we'd just, trundle along. Like I, I realize it has had this weird effect on fans that we meet where they say, oh, I've been watching Toonami since since 2001, or like, I've been watching Toonami since just last year, and I've, uh, I understand so much more about my life now, or uh, the speech that Tom did really helped me. I mean, I don't, will we be here in 20 years? I, I don't know, but I think that we're, I hope not. We're having 20 years now, that'd be a good run, then we just ride off of this. <laughs> The fact that we get to go to conventions now, and we have the pre-flight streaming show, um, and it just, yeah, it, it just keeps growing. It's, it's amazing, but I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm just thrilled that people want to see our stuff and that the network keeps letting us work here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it will continue down that road and just still feel like this cool little clubhouse in outer space. So I think that puts us in a position to go a while longer. <laughs> How long that'll be, I don't know, but I'm fine. We've 
I, whenever Toonami finally does end, I will have absolutely no regrets. We left it all on the screen. Oh.